let's just sew whatever. So I'm the most professional ever and I forgot to film the um, intro video for this pattern and I already packed it up and shipped out the item. So in today's video, we are making the Polywog ID holder version two by Needle and Anchor Supply Co. Patterns and I'm really excited to show you. So let's get it started. Ha, let's get it started in here. Okay, so one thing that I find really helpful is to use a clear piece of packing tape over the piece where all of your measurements are so that you can kind of cross out as you're going and then you can just wipe it off later with a dry erase marker. I think that really comes in handy. And also kind of clipping all of your pieces together as you go. Okay, so we are going to start off the Polywog version two ID holder by prepping our D-ring connector and our lanyard strap. So I'm using linen cotton canvas from Spoonflower. So I'm actually not going to be interfacing any of this just because I don't want it to be um, too thick for my machine. I am using a domestic Juki, the TL2000QI. So I'm starting off with my D-ring connector. I'm folding it in half and then folding those raw edges in towards the center and pressing. And I'm going to baste along both sides. And then we're gonna make this lanyard really quick. So I'm just gonna turn you to my ironing board. And what I like to do is just fold this piece in half and iron using plenty of steam. And then I'm going to fold my raw edges into the center on both sides. Uh, she likes to leave a little bit of a gap. I'm gonna do the same. And I'm using three quarter inch wide hardware. So I'm just folding both sides into the center. You can do one at a time, whatever's easier for you. And you really want to make sure you use a decent amount of steam, otherwise it's not going to hold very well. I mean, like it will, but it won't. Okay. So now you can then fold it in half again. And then all of your raw edges are, well, the other edges are. And I'm just going to fold the top under a little bit so that there's no raw edge there and clip and then I'm going to repeat that on the other side so you're just going to be folding all of this into the center And then we're gonna repeat that on this side. So there's there's other ways to do this with less bulk. Just this is the way I do it. I'm just folding it under about half an inch. You can press it with your iron or not. I'm gonna fold in half. And you'll wanna trim all of the little extra pieces, of course, before, but there you go. We're ready to top stitch along all four sides of this piece. And then we're just gonna top stitch along um, the sides of the D-ring connector. Okay, so I am sliding my connector through. I actually switched out to a half inch D-ring because it fits a little bit better for the way I folded it. And I'm just going to sew across the bottom. A few times because what would it hurt okay and that is all prepped and ready to go and I have my lanyard strap finished with thin it like with nice edges so when the pattern tells me to um, 
do that, I will do that. Oh wait, that's right now. Huh. All right. Oh, okay, okay, I see. So what I'm just gonna do is how I normally do like a wristlet strap is I'm going to fold one of my edges up, make sure this is nice and straight, and you can actually just kind of put your other edge inside. And you can rivet through that, but my machine will have no problem. But you do want to make sure that um, everything loops nicely. You don't want to twist anything accidentally. So just kind of watch out for that. There we go. And then I'm going to make a box stitch. why I didn't add any interfacing. This machine isn't really the strongest. And then I'm just going to go across the center. To be fair though, this really isn't the strongest needle. trim all my excess little threads. <sighs> all right. So there is our lanyard all finished. Okay, so I am working on the ID window cutout pieces, the window frames. There is piece A and B, which should be mirrored. I have interfaced these pieces with woven fuse, but I'm not interfacing any other pieces with woven fuse because it's just going to be way too thick. So um, it says to measure and draw a rectangle on the inside. So I'll go ahead and do that. I've got my ruler here. And the measurements are given in the pattern, but I'm not going to give them out. Oh, wait. Ah, okay. I'm doing that wrong. I thought so. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. Well, that looks super confusing. <laughs> okay. So that is what you'll want it to look like. You can see the seam allowance, not necessarily the seam allowance, but the distance between those two. And we're going to cut out the inner rectangle. And you could use this little bit of fabric for something else later, which is kind of cool. So I'm just really carefully going to cut it out. And then I'm going to use this little cutout piece to make sure that the size I cut out of the one I didn't trace quite right um, comes out well. Okay. So I can just kind of shade where not to cut. So just make a little tiny snip. There we go. 
So here's my little cutout pieces. I will set those aside. And then I have my two ID window pieces that are mirrored. So when they go together, they'll fit right. Okay, so now we are going to cut into the corners. Um, and we want to um, just cut to our corner at a diagonal. Like that. So I'll kind of trace here what we're doing. Okay, so these diagonal black lines are where we're cutting out. Well, not cutting out, but we're just snipping. It's kind of like uh, when you do a zipper box or a zipper pocket box. Okay, now it's ready. Okay, so we're going to prep our zipper. It's a number three all-purpose zipper, so with the small zipper head. And what we're gonna do is we're going to mark a straight line across the zipper half an inch from the zipper stop. So I've marked it with a pen half an inch from the zipper stop. Pinch the line and fold over the zipper teeth, creating a 90 degree angle. So like that. Yeah, okay. And then you're gonna sew it in place so that your zipper is nice and straight and you don't have those metal stops anymore. And then you wanna make sure you do it um, identical each side. So zipping your zipper to where you just folded it can really help you. And I'm just adding little stitches right along the side so that it's going to be hidden when we add it to um, the main fabric. So I'm just trimming off the excess right alongside. And it's not perfect, but this will be within the seam allowance, so it's going to be okay. And then we're going to work with our zipper tab. We're gonna fold it in half and we're going to fold one side over and you can glue it down or you can um, just kind of finger press it. But for the other side, you're gonna fold it and then unfold it. Place the unglued edge face down flush with the end, oh yeah, four and a half inches is what we're wanting to have this. So I'm marking my zipper at four and a half inches. This is for version two, but will also work for version one. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it at four and a half. And we're gonna lay this together and then you're gonna sew at that fold line. So right side down on the zipper teeth, sew along the fold line. So here's my zipper face up, here's my zipper tab face down, and then we've sewn across that fold, and then you'll flip this over to create that zipper tab, and then you can sew across the top. And 
then um, you can just kind of cut off the excess zipper tab. It's so cute. Oh, I threw it on the ground. What's new? Okay, so for version two, there is a little window for the ID. Um, the verbiage for this was a little confusing, but that's only because I have not made this before. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to trim off the metal stops at the top of my zipper, and we're going to cut this piece to five inches, okay? Okay, zipper is cut to five inches. I've cut off the metal from each end. And there are a total of four tabs. I don't know if I mentioned that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay one face down and sandwich the zippers. So I've got one along the back side and one along the front, and they are um, right sides together. And you're going to sew with a half inch, oh no, I'm sorry, a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna sew those together. And then you're gonna repeat that on the other side. So I've got one zipper tab face up. I'm laying my zipper face up as well. And then I'm laying my other tab face down. And these are cut with a little bit of excess, which is nice. And then quarter inch seam allowance, not half an inch, quarter inch. Okay, great. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna press this open. So you're going to have raw edges inside, but that's okay. So I'm going to pull these and press it really quick with my iron. Okay. Perfect. So right now our finished zipper should be six inches with the tabs. So right now mine is closer to six and a half, so we're gonna trim off the excess, but you wanna make sure that the zipper within the tabs is four and a half inches. So mine is good, thank goodness. I, I honestly didn't think it would be. Um, so I'm about half an inch longer than I need to be, so I'm gonna cut a quarter of an inch off of each end here. And this is cutting off the raw end. So let's go ahead and see. Yep, now we're at six inches. And I think I can top, yeah, okay. I can top stitch up against the zipper now. Perfect. Okay, so your finished zipper with the tabs is going to be six inches. And this is the ID window zipper for version two of the Polywog. Oh, that's right, I have a little trash can. Yay! Okay, so we are working on version two, so you'll want to skip through the pattern pages with version one. And you'll place your interfacing strips, except that I just went ahead and interfaced the whole thing, so whatever. And you can use a glue stick to fold these pieces in. I just used an iron and um, a lot of steam and it works fine. Fold back and finger press. And then there is a zipper edge, which is the longer side of your ID window. So there's a short side here and a longer side up here. Okay, so we have our completed ID window zipper and window frames. So this long edge that we have folded over is the zipper. This is where our zipper is going to go. So we have folded it in half so that they look about the same on the top and the bottom and repeated that with both sides. Okay, 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 I think okay. So I have decided that I like this one the best for the front because you can see lots of soot sprites. So I'm going to lay this wrong side up and I'm going to add a few pieces of double-sided tape 
around the opening. And you will be covering up the folded zipper edge on the top, like just the, the very, very bottom of it. You'll be covering a little bit of that. So I'm placing it fairly close to the edge, but not like to where it'll show or anything. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna peel the tape off of this, which is the front. I'm peeling the tape off the front and I'm going to add my vinyl. And I am using this um, glittery vinyl from So Hungry Hippie. Um, it doesn't really look like there's a front or a back. So just kind of pick whichever one you like. And then you're gonna center your vinyl on the pieces. So you wanna make sure that there's plenty within your seam allowances. So there's that. Awesome. And now we're going to put a little piece of double sided tape along the top to put our zipper in place. Just a little bit and kind of center that. Yep. So there's what it's looking like from the front. And we have not sewn anything together yet, which is why we're using that double-sided tape. It is our friend. Because now we're going to grab the back side of this so that there's no raw edges on the inside or anything. And we're gonna add some tape to that. And I'm not going to be as careful of where I place my tape. I'm just gonna add a few pieces because we are sandwiching it all together and then we'll be sewing through it all. Oops, so noisy. Um, so she's saying don't peel off all your paper on the double sided tape. You want to kind of line things up, make sure all of the edges are covered that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the top I'm gonna line that up first get that in place and then I can peel off the sides okay and then you can peel off the bottom and line everything up so that everything is encased. So it looks the same on the front and the back. And then I'm going to top stitch along the zipper and then we're gonna to top stitch along the opening. And I am looking at the picture and it looks like she goes all the way across the top. Okay, yes, we are going to top stitch through the ID panel. And I think I'm going to go around it twice just for um, kind of decoration. Honestly, it's not going to make it hold any better. I just kind of want to. throwbacks I used to I actually designed my own little ID window ID holder so long ago I sold them for $12 each 
and they sold like crazy, but they weren't lined. The zippers weren't finished on any edge. You know, they were just little things. They did have a, um, a little D ring on them to hang them from things, but for so many years, I'd have people come up and be like, do you have any more? And I'm like, no, I can't make them anymore. My machine stopped cooperating with me, which is true, it did. Okay, trimming all the excess on my other sides. That's a little threads here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now that all of this is top stitched, front and back look pretty similar, except one has the zipper face up and one does not. Um, what we're gonna do is we're going to lay all of our pieces together. Um, so this here is the lining piece, the ID window pocket lining. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste along all the edges to keep that in place. And your, your tabs may be a little long, that's okay. I'm basting through my zipper just along the top, going along the sides. Really close to the edge, of course, because that's a base. Perfect. And then I'm just going to trim off my tabs so that it's all the same size. So now you have a zippered ID pocket so that in case somebody wants to put extra debit cards or anything like that, it's nice and secure. Okay, so now we're ready to add the zipper top, which is piece J and our D ring. So what we're gonna do is we're going to lay J face down across the zipper, oh, wrong way. Well, I said wrong way for me because it's directional. So we're laying that face down and a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to flip this up and top stitch. And you can kind of readjust your seam allowance here as you're top stitching. I'm loving this lime green thread. Okay, so there's that. And then our lanyard D-ring connector is going to go on the top edge which is the side with the closed zipper pull. Um, so just right along here. And I'm just gonna kind of move it in about a quarter of an inch. So I've made sure that it's within the seam allowance just a little bit so that way when we sew it together, it's nice and tight. And there's a little extra stability. Okay, so now we're going to um, make sure that our exterior back panel matches the front. So I'm just gonna steam it really quick. And lay them together. Huzzah, they line up. They line up, guys, I'm so excited. Sometimes things don't work out, you know, but this is working out great. Okay, so take the prepared ID window exterior front panel and place it face up with the D-ring connector edge oh, to your left. Well, this is fine. And then your top zipper with the tab center face down, tab to the right. So three quarters of an inch on each side. So just kind of center your zipper. And you can baste it in place if you want, or you can go ahead and add your lining. And the lining piece is trapezoidal, which is really cool, so that you, 
Um, it kind of helps you grade your pattern piece. You know, I, I don't know how to say it, but it's idiot proof, honestly. <laughs> so I've got my zipper on and then here is my lining. So you'll see that each, it's a little bit smaller, which is really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that in place. If you need to, you can kind of unzip your zipper or use a zipper foot. Some people use those, right? And then I'm just double checking to make sure I caught my zipper and it's going to hold up long term. Okay, and then for now we're just going to press it out of the way. We're not going to do any top stitching and we're going to repeat on the other side. So if your, um, your pattern piece is directional, make sure to take note of which way it's going. Line it up nice and centered. Make sure the sides of your little pouch are even and then find the bottom trapezoidal bit make sure it's within the bottom and then set it on the other side on. and then as i reach the head of my zipper i'm just going to leave my needle in the fabric lift up the foot and unzip and Okay, so now I will press both sides open. I'm gonna zip my zipper back up and then make sure you're only ironing from the lining side just in case you hit that vinyl. You do not wanna melt it, especially when you've come so far, you know? Actually, I think I'm going to add a little name tag. No, it's fine. I'm not going to worry about it. I was going to add like a little name tag right here, but I don't think it'll make, like coordinate well enough. So I'm going to start where my zipper head is and back stitch and back stitch and back stitch. And then I'm going to continue on down. And then as I get to the edge of my zipper tab, I'm going to pivot and sew through the very bottom edge of the zipper tab all the way and pivoting back to the other side. And then I'm going to back stitch and back stitch and back stitch at my zipper tab. And there is what it's looking like so far. We're almost there, guys. Okay, we are ready to finish up the assembly. So we're going to open the zipper and put the lining sides right sides together and the exterior panels right sides together. You're going to push your zipper piece into your lining. And we're going to clip all this together. I have no pieces left over, so that's a good sign. And just kind of line everything up. Thank you. 
I'm going to go ahead and continue using the same stitch length. It looks like it's working pretty well. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave the entire bottom of this left open. Backstitch, backstitch. I'm using a slightly wider seam allowance in the lining, even though it's still braided. Let's have it. I'm backstitching at the zipper. I'm backstitching. And then I'm getting closer to the bottom. So I'm just going to, again, backstitch. Sewing along the bottom edge. Getting closer to the side, we're going to pivot, back stitch, and then make sure you can feel your D-ring and kind of slide it out of place just in case. And then I'm going to back stitch kind of before the D-ring, at the D-ring, and after the D-ring to help stabilize that. You don't want it to sneak out. Ooh, haha, -ha. I hit a zipper. It's okay. Forgot to unzip that. Oh, did I sew like right through it? I sure did. That's okay. Oh, that scared me. We didn't break a needle though. Um, so the top zipper on the ID window, I forgot to unzip. So make sure you do that. There we go, pushed it out of the way. Everyone's okay. Let me cut my thread really quick. Okay, so I'm going to start from down below there, back stitch, come back up and back stitch. And add my zipper. Okay, and then I'm going to check from the other side that my exterior stitching is within my basting stitch. And it is, but you can see here I got a little bit wavy, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew along that again and try and straighten it up. Okay, much better. Okay, so I'm gonna trim that down. And I used linen cotton canvas from Spoonflower and it feels honestly really nice, even uninterfaced. Um, I interfaced both of my ID windows and I really don't think you would have needed to with how thick it is. Um, I think just interfacing one of those panels would be plenty thick, especially since I didn't interface the back at all, so it feels a little unbalanced. But once you start putting stuff in it, you're not even gonna notice. All right, that's right, I have a trash can. All right, trimming my lining down. And then we're gonna turn it through. So I'm starting with the corners and I'm just using my thumb to slowly push it out. You don't want to push with anything that's hard or you'll just rip right through your seams and that's not good. Okay. And then kind of pushing on the corner at the zipper tab looks good. And then I'm going to fold in my lining bottom about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to press this. And then we're going to top stitch it closed. And I'll just add one of my Warmy No labels. In. 
And then over time, things will kind of soften up. We can close the zippers, check for any loose threads. And then if you're going to give this a final press, iron your ironing board and then lay this over top. Don't melt your vinyl. Um, I'm going to give it a quick press from the exterior backside just to help smooth out those wrinkles. But there she is all finished. Oh my gosh. I love this little compartment. And I'm so glad I used the sparkly vinyl. It's so cute. Um, I think my customer is going to love this. So someone came up to me at uh, Wizard World Chicago. Her name is Natalie and she bought a bag for me and she was like, um, I think she came by a couple times over the weekend, but she, she came up one of the last days and was like, do you ever make like ID holders like this? Like what's on my neck? And I was like, no, but I absolutely can because my friend Cindy has been bugging me to make a video for this pattern and... I just haven't. I don't know why. Ow. What did I even do? Um, so I was really excited. I charged her $35 for this, which I think is totally fair. It's a couple of pieces and I think it'll go quicker the next time. If I make another one, it would go a lot quicker. Um, I really love the way it turned out. I don't think it's too bulky, um, especially since I didn't add a ton of interfacing, but it'll hold like a good amount of stuff which is really cool and the other size still has the top zipper but it doesn't have the zippered closed ID holder if that makes sense so it's really up to you and your customer what you guys want to do but I really love version 2 um, so yeah that's it I hope you guys enjoyed this video it was really fun to make thank you so much Carissa for designing an awesome pattern and um, dealing with my annoying questions. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and be sure to subscribe.